So, for example, if I want to place the, the center of the flower in the golden mean, I could place it there, or if I flip it over, I could place it there. And I love that idea of it being placed there. So I'm going to make a little mark. I've got one of these um, dissolvable um, aquarelle pencils and make a mark there. So that's that way. It, and then if I extend them to their max, extend the calipers to their maximum, to the top and bottom, then uh, that's the golden mean that way. So right here, just draw a little circle is where I'm going to place the center of the flower. That is the golden mean of the um, space that I have there. zoomed in on my palette. This is Peacock Blue. It's this um, magnificent Holbein colour. And this is Quinacridone Violet. And these two colours make the most magnificent purple over here. Oh, so beautiful, so rich, so regal. It's a regal. And this has a little bit of Viridian in it. Oh, it's now got blue and viridian. I'm just re-wetting. Okay, a light spritz everywhere. And start with this magnificent purple. in and try and leave the edges white. I've got a little space over there so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of tone 
on it maybe or oh, make that blue run this blue has run a little more than i want to so i'm just going to gather some of that up i'm washing it off and then i'm going to dry it on my towel a little bit and then gather it up again wash and put it on my towel again you can just see that off to the left of the camera there and gather that up that's better now this space is not logical i'm going to pick up some of that little bits of paint up here and put tone over here just a tiny bit that's a space i quite like just going to turn it into a thirsty brush again and drag it into there i like that space so that's why i want to try and keep it and i'm going to try really hard to keep this space so i'm just going to see if i can re-establish that line there just constantly removing the excess moisture and dragging it off it's very wet so it keeps running back in oh there's a little bit of tone up there that i need to add tiny bit of tone might come in and touch those edges just take off might make that come to the edge and that come to the edge that's come to the edge and oh i quite like this one now and that's doing beautiful things that edge i like that this is all fuzzy now a bit risky touching over here because it's starting to dry there's some um, might do some more dragging so this time i'm going to go in for the thicker blue uh, so it's half it's on its way to drying so if i'm lucky i'll get some of this blue staying there rather than just dissipating into the there just gathering up the thicker stuff yeah. I'll do it over on this petal as well. Having said that, I want to overdo it. Maybe I'll do it to that one and only one on this one. That's that little space and I, I'm, I'm going to just leave that space for now because sometimes you can just ruin it instead and that little bit of white is quite lovely. I'm going to use this thicker paint to darken under there and then I want to darken the base of the uh, stamen so I'm just looking for some thick paint here's some thicker quinacridone violet this is definitely the violet here so I wonder if I can just dot in yep that's going nicely In a few more lines with that thicker paint so when it's really wet the lines the wet and wet lines dissipate and when it moves to this half dry state half wet you can um re-establish your wet in wet lines
extinguish that's the side of that petal. Okay. So it's still lovely and wet. And um, the paper is swollen and then there's a valley and then it's swollen again. So that means that the wet paint may gather in the valley and I might very likely get a back run. So I'm going to do is grab a dryer and dry it off because the alternative is to tip it on its side and I quite like what it's doing so I don't think I want to risk that. I'm just um, washing my brushes. wonder if I might risk taking some more off there before I dry it. Yeah, I think I will. Okay, I've washed my mop. I'm going to use the towel. Um, you can just see what I'm doing at the edge of the camera there. I'm really going to squeeze it out now. And because I don't want to put any moisture on the page, I just want to take off. Okay, and I'm thinking about this section here. Just want to take little bits off. It's not really coming off. Look, I'm putting it on the tissue. There's almost nothing being lifted. This is also very um, soft, so not ideal for lifting. I'm going to switch to my um, flat brush. And again, squeeze out all the excess moisture. Making sure there's no drips on the ferrule. And Oh, that's better there because so I don't want to lose that beautiful um, space there. Everything else is quite heavy at what I've done. So that space is important. I'm just going to make that line there. I might re-establish that line. Oh, uh-oh, put on some colour, just cleaning it off. So the water is running into this petal and it's doing the most beautiful thing. Well, that is a happy accident if ever I've seen one. Might take off a little bit here and here. Some colours lift more easily than others. Right, I'm going to definitely go and dry it off now. And I've got just enough time to dry it off and maybe finish it before my guests arrive. It's Father's Day today. Dry with the hair dryer. Assessments. I'm just checking it's dry enough. Um, with the beautiful violet, I'm going to make a little more of that purple colour. Such a regal purple, and it's lovely and dark. And what I'm going to do is establish which petal sits on top of other petals. For example, this one, when I look at it, this one is behind.
unfortunately I'm going to have to finish this later because my guests have arrived early. Okay, I'll come back to it later. I'm just going to finish off. So one of the first things I'm going to do is um, add some highlights to the centre of the flower. And I, um, I know that this is actually quite dark, but I want it, I'm using a white watercolour pencil here, uh, I want it to jump out and I want to add more interest to the centre of the flower. So I'm just adding little highlights using a white watercolour pencil. The dots over here. The value of using a white watercolour pencil rather than gouache is that your painting, your watercolour painting remains purely watercolour. As soon as you introduce white gouache, then you're introducing mixed media because white gouache is not, gouache in general is not watercolour. It's a water-based medium like acrylic, but it's not watercolour. I love this pencil. Um, I'll talk about this pencil at the very end. So um, I've just spritzed my palette. It's the exact same palette as yesterday. In fact, I haven't even washed out the water. Um, but it, it really doesn't matter to me. So and what I was yeah. doing yesterday, what I was doing at the end was just um, making the petals sit on, uh, look as though they're sitting one in front of the other. So I'm just going to um, complete this petal sitting on top of this petal here. Here's the exact same mix of yesterday. It's one of the very many wonderful ways in which watercolour is marvellous. There's my palette from yesterday. I didn't have to do a thing and it's just sitting there ready for me to use. So um, with this brush, I'm going to go back into this grey green mix and negatively paint the petal. Sorry about me not finishing my sentences. I get um, so focused on what I'm doing, I forget that I'm talking. I forget that I'm supposed to be talking anyway. Right. Um, with just a little bit of water, I'm going to bring this edge, just soften tiny bits. Soften tiny bits. And um, so I want to re-establish that edge. I've got this petal here to do, so I'm...
and I'm just thinking about the ratio of the stem width to the uh, center and yeah it's not too bad I could continue to soften off but I think I'll make it a little slimmer by running water through it just pushing some water through it maybe I'll soften that side as well so it's got a presence but by softening it off it has I, I, it's not going to draw the eye down there okay I'm gonna say that that is done as tempting as it is to keep playing with it it so often paintings don't improve when you play with them so I'm just washing my brushes while I contemplate oh should I shouldn't I is there something else I should add I don't know hmm I think maybe a couple of more um, little white highlights in here maybe some little line bits like little some strokes of going all over the place these little famine things it's probably not a word I'll make it go over the petal a little bit yeah oh I quite like that that's a little better Okay, now I'm going to let that dry and while I let it dry, I'm going to talk about the colours that I used and the relationship of the colours to each other. So I'm just going to set this aside. Okay. If we imagine this is a colour wheel, that would be yellow, that would be blue and that would be red. And then I'm going to lay my colours down so we can look at the um, combination that I just used. This is quinacridone magenta. Magenta sits about there. So it's a red and then I've got quinacridone violet. Oops, I've written over the part the way violet would sit. So you'll have to forgive me. This one is, these watercolours are all Holbein, Holbein watercolours. This is peacock blue. I'm going to put it down as being a pure blue. I think it behaved so beautifully mixing with the others. I'm going to say, let's make it a pure blue. And the green I used is Viridian. And it's not even called Viridian green. Actually, it's just called Viridian in uh, Holbein. Anyway, I've got a green, a blue, and a violet. All of these colors are very cool. And then I've got quinacridone magenta, which really sits on that midline between warm and cool. So um, it's, it's neither warm nor cool magenta. I have put together a painting that is predominantly cool. And you can see that when you put the colors together. However, if I just go ahead and add masses of magenta, I turn it to the warm side. It's all about the ratios. These are the colors that I've chosen. And then it's all about how much you use of each color. And I've used a predominance of um, quinacridone violet. So it sits just this side of the warm cool divide. The pencil that I have is a Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura Magnus. The Magnus is the key, is the key word there. There is really fat. If I turn this pencil this way and show you, oh, that way. It's really, really fat. It's like those um, kitty pencils that you can buy when children are learning how to get the grip right on their pencil. They're really fat, which means that for someone like me, it's it's um, marvelous in that I don't start to hurt myself because my pencil grip is not awesome. Um, and when you have a fatter pencil, it's, it's easier on your hand. And it's a watercolor pencil, white. And that is how I was able to keep my painting completely in the watercolor zone. They're all watercolors, including the white that I uh, used. 
My name is Marion. I'm Marion Chapman, and I so appreciate that you joined me and that you watched it this far in the video to see what the colors were that I used today. Thank you so much for joining me. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thank you for joining me. Bye.